joining us this morning. Wow, what a night. To the many Illinoisans who exercised their civic duty at the polls or by mail yesterday and throughout early voting, thank you. Thank you for believing in our democracy. Whether you voted for me or not, I serve all of the people of Illinois. It's a mandate that I take very seriously, and I look forward to serving you these next four years. During my first term, we have raised the minimum wage, balanced the state budget, got credit upgrades, made historic infrastructure investments, made college more affordable, lowered taxes to help families with inflation, lowered the price of insulin and other life-saving medications, legalized recreational cannabis while expunging possession charges, which have mostly hurt black and brown people, protected the right to reproductive health care, and the list goes on. As we embark on a second term, my administration will be laser-focused on continuing to rebuild Illinois, an Illinois that works for everyone, regardless of their background or the zip code that they live in. The election yesterday was a chance for Illinoisans to decide who we want to be. Do we want to be the kind of state that provides humanitarian assistance to asylum seekers? Do we want to be the kind of state that prioritizes the mental health and substance use treatment for people who need it most? Do we want to protect women's rights and civil rights and voting rights? Do we want to be the kind of state that leads the clean energy revolution, paving the way for an environmentally conscious and sustainable future? Well, Illinoisans made their decision, a decision that we should be a beacon of hope and opportunity and caring. Yesterday, working families won. Children won. Those who have been left out and left behind won. Our economy won. Democracy won. And I can't wait to get back to work. And with that, it is my great pleasure to introduce my partner and the best lieutenant governor Illinois has ever had, Juliana Stratton. Good morning. I'm Juliana Stratton. I use she, her pronouns. And thank you, Governor Pritzker, for that warm introduction and for your unwavering leadership. We have the choice to stand on the right side of history, and I echo your remarks when I say we will stay true to that path. I'm proud to serve alongside you to show that leadership means putting the people of Illinois first. We recognize we move forward when we all have the tools, resources, and support to take that next step. I'm excited to continue working for and with the people in communities across Illinois that are urban and rural, and all of which makes our state so vibrant. We'll continue the work by continuing to bring sustained investment in communities that were for too long disinvested. We'll push forward by protecting women's rights and committing to gender equity. We'll maintain a vision that includes every Illinoisan of just and equitable opportunities in employment, education, housing, and other areas that impact our lives. As I close, thank you to all who exercised their right to vote and voted in this election. No matter your vote, we work together to protect democracy. And I look forward to working with you to take the next step during our second term. With that, I'll pass it back to the governor to answer some questions. Governor. Thank you. Happy to take any questions, Mary Ann. Let's put that last part aside for a moment and just say Illinois is worth it. Uh, as you know, that uh, we had two MAGA billionaires who were coming against us, attacking everything that we stand for. Uh, they spent over $100 million, uh, and we're not just going to sit and get pummeled by them. We're going to uh, defend ourselves and tell people what we stand for and fight back. And so that's what we did. And we did so in a way that let everybody know what we stand for and why Illinois needs to move in the direction that it will. And uh, overwhelmingly, Illinoisans agreed with us. And as for that presidential run, how much time do you have to, to think about it before you make that? 
I am not focused on that at all. I am focused on serving as governor for the next four years. It's really the most important thing to me is we have a lot of challenges that Illinois needs to overcome. We've got to work hard on it, and I'll be doing that. If the president chooses not to run. Well, he has said that he intends to run, and so I look forward to supporting him. I look forward, hopefully, to getting the convention here in Chicago so that we can renominate him and reelect him. Well, my speech was about the values of the two parties. Um, I tried to make clear throughout the last year and in my reelection bid uh, what it is that we Democrats stand for, uh, and also to point out what the Republicans really stand for. Uh, they are a party that is run by Donald Trump. Um, the, my opponent was a Donald Trump disciple, uh, and uh, you know those are values that. Illinoisans don't appreciate, don't agree with, uh, and we successfully, uh, you know, made our message clear and, and won. But the options were much broader than that. Uh, they truly were. It was definitely a national level speech. You were addressing a national issue. You didn't mention your opponent once. You referred to Trump twice. You referred to a MAGA a couple of times at least. I mean, this seemed to go far beyond the contours of the I was expressing my values. These are my values. Um, you know that I helped to build a Holocaust museum here. You know that I have fought against hate really for my entire life. Uh, I really believe that the Republican Party, and that especially includes the Illinois Republican Party, who nominated Darren Bailey, that uh, they, are, they stand for the MAGA Republican ideas, uh, Donald Trump, uh, that party has been taken over entirely, clearly, and so I wanted to make clear what I stand for. That's all. I, look, I'm a, an Illinoisan through and through. Um, I want to be the governor of Illinois for the next four years, uh, and I'm excited to make sure that we're accomplishing things for the people of Illinois and expressing our values. I really think the majority of people in Illinois agree that we should be standing up against hate. Oh, there's a lot of work that's been done by the General Assembly over the last number of months in working groups, and so they're going to bring that to the veto session, and uh, I'll be watching carefully. I've made my thoughts uh, clear, and uh, we'll see if we can get something done during the veto session to address the changes that, that we ought to be making. He said very few words. Um, I got on the phone. He said, uh, I said, uh, Senator Bailey, he said, uh, Governor, I want to congratulate you. And I said, well, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And he said, okay, then. That's the entire call. Tell us about your call with President Biden. Did you guys discuss 2024? <laughs> uh, no, I, I got a nice call uh, from President Biden uh, congratulating me on our victory, uh, reaffirming his belief that uh, we've really been imaginative and effective at uh, using federal dollars here in Illinois to get big things done for the people of Illinois, for working families. And uh, he talked about all that on the call. And uh, it was a nice call, really just a congratulatory call from the, the president. I don't know why you are. I think I've answered. Happy to answer your next question. Yeah. What's that? I, that's true. Given the stakes in 2024, mm -hmm. given your uh, unwavering support for abortion rights, would Illinois adopt even the state constitution or move to cause these abortion beyond just having it be strong? I think everybody knows where I stand on the issue. Uh, of supporting uh, women's reproductive rights. And so anything that we can do certainly would be an advancement to protect uh, women's rights. And um, I, It's certainly something that we could think about. I, you know, it is obviously very difficult to get things onto uh, the Illinois Constitution. 
Uh, and so that's one of the considerations, I think. But, but here's the thing. We are a pro-choice state, and certainly as governor for the next four years and with a Democratic General Assembly, uh, I think we will successfully expand our capacity to deal with the challenges that are now facing Illinois because every state around us has become an anti-choice state. So uh, we're going to do everything we can to protect a woman's right to choose, and I, I pledge to women everywhere in our state that uh, it is, I take it as a very personal responsibility uh, that we should protect them and that we should do everything that we can to continue to do that. Jim Durkin announced that he's Sorry, just, yeah. It's okay, Danny. Yeah, I was looking right at you. Yeah. You said you would serve all people of Illinois. Yes, ma'am. Clearly, they should move away from the Donald Trump platform. Uh, the Republican Party has gone so far off the rails now that uh, they don't represent the majority of people in the state of Illinois. In fact, they've become a super minority party representing a super minority of people in Illinois, even though they control that the super minority of, of uh, Republicans control the Republican Party. Um, so I implore them to change. Uh, I also have always reached out, literally from before I was elected the first time, uh, to the Republicans in the General Assembly to work with them, and we've gotten a lot done. I don't know if you recall, but many of the things that I just talked about that we accomplished actually were done in a bipartisan fashion. We legalized cannabis in a bipartisan fashion. We did it, we passed the infrastructure bill in a bipartisan way. We passed my first budget in a bipartisan way. It was the Republicans who decided after one year that going into an election year, they wanted to stop working together. So I, I'm open to working with Republicans on good, rational, uh, you know, solid ideas for the future of the state. And yeah, compromise is a good thing. If they have good ideas, they should bring it to the table. Well, that's not me. I think you have seen. I'm again. I've worked with Republicans, uh, and I look forward to. Um, I have always had an open door, uh, and I have asked Republicans to come see me if they want to talk about something and think we can work together on something. Uh, I've been open to that. I've never rejected that idea. Uh, I do like the idea of us having bipartisanship in the state of Illinois. Look, I, I'm not going to compromise my ideals and the things that I believe. Uh, but on the other hand, again, if you bring good ideas, uh, it's, you know, it's something we ought to be listening to and incorporating. Well, you apparently didn't see the pictures of me with Cam Buckner or with Alderman Eugene Sawyer. Well, there were, I had a group of people together. Um, you know, you're making a, more of it than it is. Uh, look, he's the congressman from the area where I was shaking hands at a, you know, at a, the Orange Line stop, and um, and he's a he's a good man. I am not taking sides in the mayoral race. Uh, I am focused on you know the job that I have ahead of me in my second term. Mike. Well, again, that's going to be a question of, you know, a roll call, uh, of looking at what uh, we can get, and I'd like to do it in a bipartisan fashion also, what we can get together. We'll, we'll see. Um, I think that the fact is whether we get it done in November, we get it done in January and early in the session, whenever that may be, um, we are going to work on passing an assault weapon ban and making sure that we are protecting women's reproductive rights by expanding capacity and in making the investments that are necessary here in our state to protect women. Your take on the fact that AP called the race at 7 p.m. when there were two people down three women's votes? I have to say that I was as surprised as anybody. Look, I, I also saw a program the night before uh, watching PBS. They interviewed Julie Pace, who works for AP, uh, talking about the 
the complex nature of the models that they use in order to make predictions um, and projections. And so, I, you know, I was fascinated watching it the night before, not expecting that our race would get called quickly. But look, they weren't wrong. Governor Jim Durkin announced this morning that he will not seek another term as a House GOP leader. What's your reaction to that? And obviously, as someone that you're, that you're used to working with, are you concerned um, that someone who's much more conservative, someone from this called the MAGA wing of the GOP, might um, get that job? I'm only concerned if someone takes the job who's unwilling to sit down and actually talk about, you know, what we might do together. Um, if they're unwilling to talk, if they uh, reject the idea of bipartisanship, that would not be good for the state of Illinois. Is Durkin a loss? Uh, you know, I, I obviously got to know uh, the minority leader uh, in my first year in office uh, when we worked together on so many uh, issues uh, and again passed a bipartisan budget together uh, and so look I, I think someone who has served as many years as he has uh, admirably uh, honorably uh, is someone that you know is probably a loss for the Republicans uh, if because he's decided not to run uh, for leader again and um, and so you know I look forward to whoever the new uh, uh, minority leader is sitting at the table and getting things done with them. I just remind you that everybody at that table has now changed uh, since I've been in office. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we've worked as be best we could uh, together on the, you know, with the folks on the other side of the aisle. Uh, but we've gotten a whole lot done. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure, Marianne, that I'm catching, yeah, Ben. Well, I think there were clearly two very important issues that uh, stood out that, that uh, uh, helped Democrats. One is on the economy. I mean, we not only did we raise wages across the state by raising the minimum wage and create jobs, of course, but we also passed a significant tax cut of $1.8 billion in gas, grocery, property, and income tax relief. Uh, and, of course, we balanced the budget that made that possible. So all of that, I think, is something that was on the minds of people when they went in to vote. The other, of course, is I think there were an awful lot of people, men and women, uh, who cared deeply about women's reproductive rights, and I think that that mattered to them when they went into the polls. I would love to work on continuing to balance the budget and run surpluses so that we can look at permanent tax relief. This gentleman the way back, yeah. Well, Republicans lost resoundingly in Illinois, but you're asking about a, a, the federal races. Um, I, what advice would I give to Republicans? To Democrats, okay. Yeah, I've got a lot of advice for Republicans. Um, uh, no, I, look, uh, I think Democrats did extraordinarily well and have delivered for the American people, and that's one of the reasons why in a red wave year, and you know, we know what the history is in the first midterm election after a new president is elected, uh, and yet, defying odds, Democrats held so many seats. And just look at the seats uh, in Congress here in Illinois. We, we swept. Uh, and in so many races across the nation, you know, there was a discussion that the Republicans were going to pick up 50 seats in the House. That's clearly not happening. Uh, there was a discussion that uh, Republicans might get 54 seats in the Senate. That's clearly not happening. Uh, so I think Democrats are doing the right things, delivering again for working families. That's what we're doing in Illinois. That's why we've succeeded. You know, I just point out that um, we expanded margins in the, you know, in the collar counties, uh, you know, in the one sort of Republican uh, collar county, McHenry County. Uh, you know, we diminished the margin of loss there significantly. We won uh, counties in Illinois that we had, that I had not won. Uh, before, even though I, you know, won a, a historic 16 counties last time, uh, but you know, we won Kendall County, we won DeKalb County, uh, we won in places that we hadn't before, uh, and so, and that's all because you know we won the Supreme Court races. I want to point that out too. Uh, we won more uh, seats in the state house, uh, and that's all because Democrats 
delivered. We, we delivered on so many things. I talked about them this morning, uh, and we've, we're continuing to do that. Republicans are, you know, complaining, criticizing, and they have no solutions for anything. And so, you know, I think they should look at uh, their own conduct uh, and think about actually coming to the table to get things done with us. I don't know about the latter part of your question, but clearly a repudiation of, of uh, uh, Trump candidates uh, took place last night. Um, you, you can look at some of the major Senate races, major governor's races, and uh, Republicans who gladly had uh, Donald Trump come into their state and campaign for them lost. Just look at my opponent. Um, well, on the former question, I'd just say, you know, they meet on a regular basis to look at vaccines and, you know, the, you know, what requirements there ought to be. Uh, there are no policies or plans to expand to include a COVID-19 vaccine in those requirements. Um, and then, sorry, the second part of your question was... What, what might I have done differently? <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, uh, I think everybody can look back and think, you know, could I have done something better along the way? And I've certainly answered that question uh, with regard to the emergency that we dealt with in, in COVID-19 that we're continuing to wind down. Uh, but look, I, I, I don't know that I can tell you that there are things that I regret exactly, but I can tell you that um, I wish that we had had more of an opportunity to work in a bipartisan fashion. I wish that, uh, and I know that other Democrats feel, <clears throat> as I do, that there should be opportunities to do that. You know, Illinois used to be a state where that took place very often. And, uh, and I've tried very hard. I, you know, in my first year before COVID hit, I had Republicans over to the governor's mansion every week uh, and with Democrats. And, and, you know, we had dinners. We had cocktail parties. You know, we, we spent time talking about things in a uh, you know, personal way as well as on policy. And, uh, and I, I, I wish that we had had more opportunity to do that. Uh, during the last four years because I think we could have gotten more done. And I wish that Republicans hadn't chosen to become very partisan, uh, you know, shortly after my first year in office. And um, I think we can get back to a point where we are talking to one another. Again, it'll depend upon leadership and, and others in the party, in the Republican Party. Governor, you said that uh, yes. you intend to serve out uh, four years of your term. Mm -hmm. I commit to you that I'm, you know, planning to be the governor for the next four years. Um, that uh, we have too many things that we need to accomplish for the state. Uh, I think we all know, you know, what that list is, or at least you all have a pretty good idea uh, what that list is, and and we're going to continue to do it. And again, principle among them is we've got to stop being irresponsible about our fiscal situation in the state, like my predecessor was, and like was proposed by my opponent during this latest campaign, um, and actually focus on solving the real fiscal challenges of Illinois. I know that sometimes sounds boring to people when you talk about budgets, uh, paying debt, uh, you know, dealing with those fiscal challenges. Uh, it's not as exciting as, you know, some other things, but uh, but I think it's vitally important that all of us focus on that in both parties. And I think that's something in a bipartisan way we should continue to work on. So there's no group behind the scenes. If it's commit to you planning to be governor, we'll be dissected. It's sort of like the definition. <laughs> I don't know what. Yeah, I, so there's no, no, that's. There's nobody behind the scenes of your campaign team. No, there was some story that I think appeared, and you, I think you tweeted it uh, 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 about 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 uh, 
about, for, I guess Reuters uh, put it out, saying there were some number of people on the national level who were talking to staff. That's absolutely untrue. I was not talking. To, I have not talked to any staff outside of my own staff. Um, and so, no, there's no, like I said, there's no plan to do anything other than be governor for the next four years. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure how to answer that question to compare, you know, why he won by the same, you know, uh, number. I didn't even see that. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure how to answer that question, to be honest with you. Yeah. Thank you.